On Tuesday, October 15th, the Supreme Court will hear oral arguments in Shuti v. Coalition to Defend Affirmative Action. Um, this case involves the Equal Protection Clause of the 14th Amendment, and it's about race-conscious university admissions. Um, so in this way, it's similar to the case Fisher v. Texas, which the court decided last term. Um, but the legal questions are different. In Fisher, the legal question was whether the University of Texas at Austin could use race as an admissions factor without violating the Equal Protection Clause, this prescription on racial um, government racial classification. And the Supreme Court in Fisher essentially said yes, so long as courts stringently review whether the university needs to use race to achieve a diverse student body. Now in Shuti, the legal question is the opposite, in a sense. It's whether a state constitutional amendment to prohibit universities from using race as an admissions factor passed by popular referendum violates the Equal Protection Clause because it denies minority groups access to the political process. Just to give a little history, um, in 2003, the Supreme Court upheld the use of race as an admissions factor at the University of Michigan Law School in Grutter v. Bollinger. In 2006, Michigan voters passed Proposition 2, a state constitutional amendment uh, which prohibited the use of race in university admissions. So Proposition 2 essentially superseded Grutter v. Bollinger. Uh, now the plaintiffs in Shuti, the Coalition to Defend Affirmative Action, uh, challenge Proposition 2. They argue that the state constitutional amendment violates the Equal Protection Clause because it denies minorities the same ability to use the political process to influence university admissions that, say, rural white Michiganders have because the latter group uh, can lobby the university to adopt policies which benefit rural students, whereas black and Latino students cannot lobby the university to adopt policies that benefit minority students because of Proposition 2. Now, the plaintiff's legal theory ultimately goes back to footnote 4 of the 1938 Supreme Court case, U.S. v. Caroline Products. Um, in footnote four, the Supreme Court suggested that government policies that burden discrete insular minorities should be subject to heightened judicial review, that courts should review them more stringently because minority groups cannot readily access the political process to, to advance their interests. They're, they're in a minority, uh, so they can't use a political process as effectively as, as majority groups can. And ultimately, this became the basis for applying strict, strict scrutiny to racial classifications. Now, in Shuti, the Sixth Circuit sided with the coalition to defend affirmative action. It was a close eight to seven vote, um, and the Sixth Circuit opinion relied on two prior Supreme Court cases. One was Hunter v. Erickson, in 1969 case where the Supreme Court said that the city of Akron could not amend its city charter to require anti-discrimination laws be approved by a majority of voters because that would deny minorities um, access to the political process to advance their own interests, anti-discrimination being a, a minority group interest. The other case that the Sixth Circuit relied on was Wa Washington v. Seattle School District 1, 1981 case, where this, uh, this, the court ruled that the state of Washington could not supersede Seattle's voluntary, voluntary school busing plan by requiring local governments to have neighborhood schools. Um, now this latter case was likely abrogated by the Supreme Court's 2007 decision in parents involved in community schools v. Seattle School District 1. There the court ruled that uh, Seattle School District's voluntary busing plan itself violated the Equal Protection Clause. So the court's doctrine changed a lot between 1981-2007 and uh, the Sixth Circuit in Shuti relied on some of the older cases. So the coalition to defend affirmative action faces an uphill battle in this case. Uh, in a separate case, the Ninth Circuit has already held that California's state constitutional ban on affirmative action uh, is constitutional, does not violate the, the Equal Protection Clause. And also it's important to remember um, that Michigan's ban only requires race neutrality in government policy, rather than subjecting anti-discrimination law itself to popular vote, uh, as Hunter v. Erickson did. So my prediction, although not my preference, is that the Supreme Court will overrule the Sixth Circuit and hold that the Michigan's state constitutional ban does not violate the Equal Protection Clause.